Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting lesson from SAGT Tech. My name is Asaf and I hope you enjoy this one. Today's lesson is on grade 7 technology, our main topic graphic communications, subtopic 3D oblique drawing as well as convention lines. This topic is meant for term 1. Let's start straight away making our 3D oblique drawing. You would recall in grade 7, we don't do isometric drawing, we only do the 3D oblique. And in order to have a correct drawing, we need to know all the, the steps that we need to go through as and when we draw this um, kind of a drawing, which is a 3D oblique drawing. Now, let's go through the steps. The first step is drawing the horizontal line. Draw the horizontal line a bit to the bottom of your page. That's my horizontal line. Let's check the second step. It says now place the front view of your drawing on the horizontal line. Now we check the front view. We, uh, a very important fact is in grade 7 we are allowed only to draw the cube or the rectangular block in terms of our 3D oblique drawing. So in this regard, we are going to be using the rectangular block. So we've got to draw the front view of this block. There it is. It look exactly like this now. Let's go to the third step. From each corner of your front view, draw the line that is 45 degrees from the horizontal line. The lines should be faint, long, and pointing to the same direction. Now, let's draw those lines, starting from the bottom right corner. There is our line. Remember, the angle, it must be at an angle of 45 degrees from the horizontal. Now, let's complete the other lines from all the corners, making 45 degrees from the horizontal line. There they are, the four of them. Very nice. And remember, these lines must be faint and you just draw them as long as you can. It is not necessary at this point in time for them to be equal in size because we are still on the construction phase. We have not yet finalized our 3D drawing. Now let's check the next step. It says, give the depth of your drawing any length in millimeters and mark such on the newly constructed lines. Uh, but let's take 20 millimeters for this exercise and let's just mark, for now, uh, let's just mark the lines on the right hand side of your drawing. Uh, you need to mark 20 in all the lines, but for now, let's just mark this too, marking the first 20 millimeters on the top line and on the bottom line. And you can do that as well on the uh, lines uh, on your left hand side. Let's check the next step, which is step number five that says draw faint vertical lines through the points on parallel lines on the right side of your drawing. Through those two points, let's draw the vertical line. There is a vertical line. And remember what you do on the right hand side, you also should do on the left hand side. Step number six says, repeat step five with the parallel lines on the left. There they are. Just draw the line through the points. That's where the point should be. And you draw that straight vertical line. Let's go to step number seven. And it says, draw a line parallel to the top line of the front view, but through the two intersections. Now, those intersection point on the top, and the intersection is where the two lines meet or cross each other. So you go to the, those uh, intersections above the um, top of your front view and draw a line through them. Let's check. And that line should be parallel to the top line of your front view. There is that line going through the two intersections but parallel to the top line. Now, what you do on top, we must also do at the bottom of your drawing. Let's check. Step 8 says exactly that. Repeat step 7 above the bottom line of the front view. That's the 7. You do it on those intersections above the bottom line of the front view. Now that is the line. You see now we have got our 3D 
public drawing we just need to finalize the drawing and how do we do that we now bold the lines that make up your 3d oblique drawing let's bold them make them bold to show the outer part of a 3d drawing there we go bolding them now they are all bold we can safely say this is our 3d block drawn to scale beautiful oh. Uh, this 3D blob can uh, represent anything. It depends on what you make, want to make out of it. It may be your cupboard, it may be your refrigerator, it may be your stove, it may be your box of meshes. Uh, but for this exercise, I just want us to make it a one-roomed house. And for it to be a house, it must have the features of the house. Let's place the features in here, starting off with the door. There is a door. And then uh, there is a nice, unusual window, which is a bit round. Let's make it a point that this window can be opened. This is how it looks. You uh, often find this type of windows in churches. And on the side, let's just put yet another uh, common window. That is a window. Now it looks like a house. Nice. That is your 3D oblique drawing. Very important. The lines that are drawn at an angle to the back should always make an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. That is what is important. And all these lines, uh, the opposite lines of the 3D oblique drawing should always be equal and parallel. Parallel meaning that they never intersect but or, uh, or they maintain equidistance between them. They never intersect and they maintain equidistance between them. Now we're going to take the very same 3D oblique drawing and try to extract the types of lines that you see on it and name those types of lines uh, according to their texture and according to how they look like. Now the convention lines. It is usually very important to extract the lines or label the lines from the drawing to show them how they are to show how they are placed inside a particular drawing as you can see we have our 3d oblique drawing here and we've got different types of lines with textures and shapes and we need to explain or give the names to those types of lines so that we get to have a better understanding of the lines themselves let's start we need first to draw the lines themselves how they look like uh, and their texture and the second thing the type of the line we name it and we describe the line as we see them now i'm going to highlight the lines and we see as to how they look like let's highlight the first ones there they are four of them we highlight this one we highlight this we highlight let's keep highlighting them now i want us to talk to to see as to how these lines look like if you uh, were very careful you'd realize that these are the lines on the outer part of our drawing and this is how they look we call because they are found on the outer part of our drawing we call them the outer lines let's describe this line look at it it is it looks very dark and it is continuous, it's not breaking. We therefore describe it as dark, thick, and continuous. It's dark, it's thick, it's continuous. Now let's get to our next line. I'm going to highlight yet another type of lines and you look uh, at the picture very carefully as I highlight these lines. And later on we'll have got to talk about them. Now, there are our lines. How do they look like? Let's first draw them. They look exactly like this uh, line, the texture. Very thin, very thin, but then continuous. It's not breaking. And 
if you have um, studied the lines very carefully, they do not form part of the final uh, drawing of a house, but they were very, very important uh, at the construction stage of the house to show how we are going to a draw or where we are going to put our house. We therefore call them just the construction lines. So these construction lines of ours, how do they look? They look very faint and continuous. These construction lines look very faint and continuous. They're not broken. They look faint and continuous. And remember, they don't form part of the final drawing of the house or whatever your uh, drawing is, but they are there, they are protruding out to show uh, us where to place our final drawing. Now, as we move forward, uh, I'm highlighting these other lines, and you are seeing them. These are the lines that you find inside your final drawing, but in actual fact, they are not visible, you cannot see them but they will know that they are there. If you open up the door, you will see those corners at the back, but we, we, we cannot actually see them. That's why they uh, drawn the way they are or the way they appear in the drawing, which is a bit broken, but they are very faint. Let's see how they look. They look broken as a broken line. And those lines, because they represent features that we cannot see we therefore call it or call them the hidden detail lines hidden detail lines and how do they look they look very faint and dashed because it's dash 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 but they look faint as they appear on our uh, drawing up there now the next line that we have uh, is this one with uh, two dark arrows on either side and that is called the dimension line and the dimension line is actually used to uh, show the distance between two points or the length of any line now how do they look they look continuous with dark arrows on either side there is the way it looks now when you draw your dimension line, it's always drawn between the two convention lines. The two convention lines that shows uh, on the either end of a line. Now we here want to check the length of our drawing. And the length, if we, as you can see in front here, this is the length, we've got the height and we've got our breadth. Now let's try to check as to where it, it, we put it in terms of determining the length of ours. That's how we turn the length. And just above the line, you write the magnitude of the line. Remember, it's very, very important that we uh, know or keep in mind that the length is always measured in millimeters. We never measure it in centimeters or in kilometers or in meters, always in millimeters and the numbers as well as millimeters do not touch the line just drawn a little uh, distance above the dimension line itself as we move forward to check the last line you see this one it's not applicable for grade 7 it's for grade 8 but for interest sake let's check it as well and let's look at the round window you might have asked yourself as to where am I using the round window? It's because I just wanted to show you one last type of line, but like I said, it's usually used in grade eight, not seven, and that is the center line. If you look at that round window, there are two lines that would make it able that, that to, to make it able to place our the lever of the window for us to be able to open that particular window. Now. This line, there's a vertical one and the horizontal one, and the two lines should be at the center of the window. How do we know that they are exactly at the center of the window? Right, let's first remove them. After removing them, we put the two lines that help us or that show us where the center is. First, we draw the vertical one and the horizontal one. You see, they cross each other at the center, so they really show us where the center is. Now, 
let's draw them down so that we get to see them very clear how they look like. It, 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 this line looks like there is a dash, there is a dot, there is a dash, there is a dot, there is a dash. There's, it's, it's unlike the hidden detail line, it's only dashed lines. Here is a bit different, look like a chain, which have got a dash, dot, dash, dot, just like that. And we call them the what? Center lines, because we, they determine the center of our drawing. And like I said, it's a chained dash, dot, line. It looks like a chain, and the, that have the dash, dot dash dot just like that you see now for us to complete or finalize the drawing just let's just put on the lines on top of this to make sure that uh, they really show us where we should determine our center put that line and put that line you see it's a straight on top of these uh, center lines and they give us exact center of the drawing and remove the center lines to finalize the drawing. There it is. Very beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, oblique drawing as well as convention lines in uh, grade 7 graphic communication. My name is Asaf and I appreciate your viewing of this lesson and uh, for more of this kind of lessons visit us in youtube at s a g e t tech thank you very much